Welcome back to the studio. My name is Mike Pickett. I'm a graphic designer with over 20 years experience and today we're going to take a look at the magic wand tool inside of Adobe Illustrator. So if this is your first time here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, that way you don't miss anything. This series is 30 Illustrator videos in 30 days. Today right now is November 19th, I meant to do some batch filming over the weekend, unfortunately it didn't happen, so you're stuck basically with me for the next 30 days learning Adobe Illustrator day by day. So today we're going to take a look at the Magic Wand Tool. Now I think the Magic Wand Tool is probably one of the most underrated and underused tools in Adobe Illustrator. It's one of those things that we've used quite a bit in Photoshop, but I think it just kind of got lost in the shuffle inside of Adobe Illustrator. Nobody thought that a magic wand could really work for selecting vectors. We're going to go through the tool. I'll show you a couple of different uses for it, how to change the settings on it. It's a tool that I've started using more and more in my workflow, and I think you will too once you understand more about how to use it. So let's hop into Illustrator and get started. illustrators that way all right so inside of Adobe Illustrator I've opened up a file that I downloaded from Vect Easy uh, I put a link and attribution to this file down in the show notes or in the description so if you want to go download this and maybe follow along you can pause it here grab the file and then just work with me otherwise it's just attribution because it is a free file so to get started now as we all know the magic wand is a selection tool it's one of those things that you can use and it, it really does get useful, like I said, once you understand kind of all the options that you've got. So to access the magic wand, I'm going to go to the toolbar over here on the side. It's the little wand with the three little stars around it and I'm going to click on it. You can also use the keyboard shortcut Y on your keyboard. And from here, basic selection, I'm just going to say, let's grab this green. So it's grabbed every green that's on this screen and it's grabbed only that same color of green. If you see, I wanna, let's go, let's say, select inverse, and then I'm gonna go and go Command-3 to hide everything else. So you can see this is what we initially selected, was just the green color. Let me unhide everything. Option-Command-3 to unhide everything that we've hidden. And let's do the yellow. So again, just to show that we've on nothing but the yellow I'm gonna inverse my selection under the select menu and I'm gonna go command 3 to hide everything so again all we've done now is just selected all the yellow on the screen option command 3 to unhide and I'm gonna double click on the icon itself and by double clicking on it I get this little magic wand fly out that gives us different options that we can change inside of here now you'll see that right now I've got a tolerance set up to about 32 and what we can do here is we can actually use this to select different shades or different tones in the same colors. Now if you look, I've actually selected this blue here. It's, it's a really deep blue. But you see that we've actually selected more than just that blue. So let me zoom out here again. I'm just going to go Command-0 and then Command-negative a couple of times. And if I hide let's go inverse again so let's go select inverse and now command 3 to hide everything so you see it's more than just that initial blue that I clicked on it's actually picked up kind of this this green here let's look at let's just grab this one and we're gonna look at what color we actually have here I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna double click on this and you can see that we have so a CMYK of 84, 58, 39, and 18, and then here's our, our hue, saturation, and brightness is all in there. And if you notice this, so in web color, so this is pretty close to what this is, which is why our tolerance of 32 picked up both of those colors. So let's make a quick change here. I'm actually gonna click on the little fly out here next to tolerance, and I'm gonna put it down to zero. Or option, command, three to unhide everything again. And I'm going to go and grab my magic wand one more time. And let's grab that same blue. Okay, select, inverse, and three to hide. And now all we've done is selected just the blue. So you're changing your tolerance on the fill color. It's going to select colors within the same color wheel or color spectrum. 
Uh, and if we want to change that, if we want different attributes, we have other options that we can go through here. So let's unhide everything. Now if we're looking at this, so fill color, here's my other option, I can go stroke color. We don't have any stroke on any of these, so let's just grab a few here. I'm gonna grab this green, I'm gonna grab this orange, and I'm just holding down shift while I'm grabbing different colors here. And this blue, and let's grab a couple of dots here. And I'm gonna go up here and I'm actually gonna put on just a white stroke, let's say five or six, and yeah, we'll go five. So you can see now we've got all of these different shapes that we added that white stroke to. And now with the white stroke, I can go stroke color. I'm gonna knock this down right to zero so that I don't have to worry about tolerance on it, even though I don't have stroke on anything else. But a high tolerance, it could just pick up everything without that. So I'm gonna go Y, keyboard shortcut for my magic wand. And now I know this one's got a, a stroke on it, so I'm gonna click on that one. And we're gonna go select, inverse, command three to hide. Now. That one, let's, let's back up here a second. Goes Command Z, and I'm actually gonna shift and click on my background layer so that it doesn't disappear. So select, inverse should already be there. Command three, so we hide everything else. And you can see there's everything that we put a stroke on now selected inside of our design. So our other options here, again, stroke weight. And if you leave more than one, so if I were to leave all three of these checked, I would actually be selecting the same fill color, same stroke color, and same stroke weight. So let's say, let's make another quick change here and go here. I'm gonna put this one up to 15. I'm gonna bring this one down to three because I wanna show you something here. Let's put this one up to 10. We'll knock this one down to one. Okay, so again, why? Let's uh, option, command, and three to unhide everything. And I'm gonna select none. All right, so let's select this orange one here. No, you know what, let's go over here. We're gonna go to this one, we're gonna select that same green again. And just real quick so I can show you. So this one's got a, a stroke, a fill of green, and a stroke of five. Now, we don't have anything else on this screen that's green with a stroke of five. So in theory, what should happen now is if I select this, that should be the only thing that's selected on the screen, just like what happened here. And that's because we're using all three of those attributes. So we're doing fill color, stroke color, and stroke weight. Hopefully this is making sense so far. Pretty straightforward. Let's uh, shift command A to unselect everything or deselect. Now what I wanna do, I'm gonna get rid of fill color and stroke color. I'm gonna go with just stroke weight, and I've got a tolerance set of five points. So if you remember, we bumped some of these up. So let's let's use this little blue guy here. Okay, now if we look at him in just our ad appearance in the properties panel, we've got a three point stroke on there. So there's a five point tolerance. Again, in theory, that means that if we've got anything between three and eight, it should also pick up. So let's go Y, and let's grab this guy. Okay, so let's go uh, select inverse command three, and we're hiding everything now. And if you remember, this is the one that we selected, right? So three point, which this has a one point stroke on it. This one has a five point stroke on it. This one has a five point. This one has a five point. And this one has a five point. So anything above that tolerance that you know that we set because remember the other ones I put up to 10 and 15 they're not going to get grabbed because of that tolerance. Now the other thing you can do here the other options are opacity which again you can set a tolerance for your opacity so if you wanted to select everything say 50% uh, or lower you can set that up and if you wanted to do a blending mode if you've got different blending modes in here and you just want to make some changes to say everything that you put um, you know a blending mode of uh, oh I don't know let's say multiply or screen. You can grab just those objects and then make those changes that you want to make. So that's it for the magic wand. Uh, I know there's a lot of little nuanced things that we went through there. I'm hoping it made sense. If not, go back, watch it again. It's a pretty simple tool to work with, but remember, double click on that little icon to be able to get that fly out menu and make adjustments based on kind of what you need to select inside of your illustrations. I know you're not always going to use this tool. A lot of times what you can do is go up to 
the select menu and go down to same and then there's options in there. I just find that since I've started using the magic wand, things are going a little bit quicker for me rather than having to go up and use the second menu. All right, so that's it for this one, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this first episode of 30 tools in 30 days for Adobe Illustrator. Coming up in the new year, I'm gonna start putting out more content based around project work, working with clients, pricing, graphic design, how to be a, a, a freelancer, how to price yourself. So many different subjects that I've got. I actually wanna walk you guys through from say a client brief on a business card all the way through to submitting it for print and then submitting a invoice to your client. So please stick around. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. It really does help out the channel. And I gotta get back to work now. I've got a lot of work to do in the next 30 days. So I'll see you in the next video. right here. You should see my desk right now. I'm working on the office. What do you think of the backdrop? I've got lights coming. I've got a really cool wall hanging that I'm putting up. It should be fun.